guys, Mr. Backward here. Part two of lesson 1.10 is all about different kinds of variation. And there's actually four types of variation that we're gonna talk about. First thing we're gonna do is use direct variation to write out a mathematical model, so an equation. Second thing, we're gonna use direct variation as an nth power. Third thing is we're gonna use inverse variation. And lastly, we're gonna look at joint variation. So the first type of variation we're gonna talk about is direct variation. Now there's kind of two key things that we look for when we're talking about direct variation. First thing that kind of lets us know that we're talking about direct variation is it could just say that y varies directly as x. The other thing it might say is y is directly proportional to x. We just have to understand that those mean the same thing. That's just direct variation stuff. So when we're writing out a direct variation equation, it's gonna look like y equals k times x. Now that k is gonna have a name. We're gonna call it the constant of variation or the constant of proportionality. And a lot of times that k value is what we're trying to find. So let's take a look at this example. Reading through it real quick, it says, in Pennsylvania, state income tax is directly proportional to gross income. So we're taking a look at one person's income taxes and they've got a deduction of $46.05 and their gross monthly income is gonna be $1,500. We wanna write out a model that's gonna give the state income tax in terms of gross income. Now what I see happening right away is we're told that this thing is directly proportional. So that tells me right away that we're dealing with y equals some k times an x value. So what we're gonna to have to do is go through to figure out what values we're gonna plug in here, and then eventually we're gonna to have to find this k value to rewrite our entire equation. So here's what we know. We know that our state income tax varies based on how much money we make. So this y value is gonna be our income tax. This x value on the end is gonna represent our monthly income, and our k value is gonna be whatever that tax percentage is. So what I'm gonna do in this equation is just replace each of these variables with the amount that we have. We know that our income tax was $46.05. We don't know what our K value is, that's what we're trying to find, so I'm just gonna copy that down. And we know that our monthly income was $1,500. So now all we need to do is get K all by itself. So I'm gonna divide both sides by 1,500. Left-hand side, if we take 4605 divided by 1500, we get 0 .0307. And right-hand side, those 1500s just cancel out and we get our K value. So now what we're gonna do is just go back up top and rewrite our equation because we know what our K value is now. It's 0 .0307. So our final answer, the final model for this problem, Y equals 0 .0307X. Next type of variation we're gonna talk about is direct variation as an nth power. So the two things we kinda of look out for, number one, our example might say y varies directly as the nth power of x, or it could just say y is directly proportional to the nth power of x. Now we are gonna have some specific n power that we're gonna be dealing with. So when we write out this equation, it's gonna look like y equals k times x to some nth power. Maybe it's a squared power, maybe it's a cubed power. So if we look at this example, it says neglecting air resistance, the distance an object falls varies directly as the square of the duration of the fall. And we're told that an object is gonna fall 144 feet in three seconds. So I see the varies directly as a square of the duration. Okay, so this is one of those directly proportional as an nth power. And the power we're dealing with is gonna be a squared power. So when we write out this equation, it's gonna look like y equals k times x squared. Now what are these variables gonna represent this time? We were told the distance we fall varies. So this y value is gonna represent our distance and x is gonna represent our duration or time, I'm gonna call this. So if we start plugging the numbers into this equation, our distance was 144 feet equals k, we're gonna to have to find that k value, times three squared. Well, we know that three squared is just nine, so the right-hand side is k times nine. 144 is still hanging out on the left, and now all we have to do is take 144 and divide it by nine. And when we do that, we just get 16. So our k value is 16. So I'm gonna go back up to our equation that we were writing out before and just replace that k with 16. So there's our final answer, y equals 16x squared. 
third type of variation is inverse variation. So the two things we could say are that y varies inversely as x, or we could just say that y is inversely proportional to x. So our equation looks a little bit different this time. Now we've got y equals k divided by x, again for some constant value k. So in this example, we've got a company finding that the demand for their product varies inversely as the price of its product. And we're told that when the price is $2.75, the demand is gonna be 600 units. So right away, seeing this varies inversely, I'm thinking y equals k over x. Now again, just kind of picking out what each of these variables is gonna represent, the demand varies inversely. So y is gonna represent the demand and our x value well demand is varying based on the price so x is going to represent the price of our object so again just plugging numbers in our demand is going to be 600 units equals k divided by our x value which is 275 again we're trying to find k so what I'm going to do is take this 275 and multiply it over to the other side and when we punch that into our calculator we should get 1650 as our k value. So just like we've been doing, I'm gonna go back to, up to this equation that we were writing and just replace that k value with what we found, 1650. So our final equation is y equals 1650 divided by x. Last example we're taking a look at is dealing with joint variation. So we could say that z varies jointly as x and y or we could say that z is jointly proportional to x and y. So now we have multiple things affecting what this z value is gonna look like. So our equation says z equals k times x times y for some constant k. All right, last example. So we've got the simple interest for a certain savings account is jointly proportional to the time and principal. So it says after one quarter, the interest on the principal of $5,000 is gonna be $43.75. So jointly proportional, we've got some z value equals to k times x times y. And again, we need to figure out what each of these variables are gonna represent. So our interest is jointly proportional. So this z value is gonna represent the amount of interest that we have. And interest is based off the principal, so the amount we're investing, which we're gonna use as our x value, and time that we're investing this. So y is gonna represent our time. So now what we're gonna to have to do is, again, just plug numbers in. We know that our interest is $43.75. We don't know our k value, that's what we're trying to find. The principal amount that we invested was that $5,000. And lastly, our time frame, it said after one quarter. Talking in terms of a fraction, one quarter is one over Four. So now again, this is a lot of calculator work. I'm gonna take the 5,000 times a quarter and we should get 1,250. So K times 1,250 is equal to our 43.75. And then last thing, in order to find our K value, we're just gonna divide by the 1,250. And we end up with a K value of 0.035. So again, just like we've been doing, go back up to this equation plug in our k value, 0 0.035. So our interest is equal to the interest rate, 0 0.035, times the principal, times the time. I guess that's it as far as this video goes. Make sure you guys are filling out the Google form linked in the description down below. And thanks for watching.